What's up everyone, my name is Soren Iverson. I'm a product designer at Cash App, and today I'm going to show you how to design chip components. If you're not familiar with chips, they can serve four different purposes. Input chips represent information that's added in input fields, such as a person's name, a location, or an activity. Filter chips represent filters from a collection. Choice chips will come in sets of at least two options, and you can only select one at a time. Think of when you're selecting the size of a shirt or a pair of pants. Finally, there's action chips, which trigger the actions related to a primary piece of content. Instead of designing all four of those chip types in each respective state, we're just going to design the outlined and filled versions and have support for either a leading icon or a leading image, the text, and then a trailing icon. There's four components that you'll need to think about. There's the container, which holds all the information. There's the thumbnail, which is either a logo or an avatar. There's the text string, and then there's the remove icon. The first thing I'm going to do is add some text. Let's call this text string for simplicity's sake. I'm going to hit shift A to turn on auto layout. I'm going to add a fill, which is gray 100. You wouldn't be able to see these color styles if you're starting from a blank Figma file, but there's a link in the description that contains this file and you can actually pull these colors that I'm using. Let's change the space between elements to eight pixels. That won't change anything right now, but it will later. And then we'll change the horizontal padding to 12 pixels. And then we'll change the vertical padding to six pixels so that it's a height of 32. And then we're going to set the border radius to 20. And then let's take this color and we'll change this to that 600 value. And then I am going to call this default. And this is just our normal filled chip. If I take this and hit shift X, that creates our outlined chip, which has the text string and then the outline border. Now that we have the default for both of these, let's go ahead and start adding in other things. First, we're going to need our close icon. I'm going to type circle dash X mark, and then I'm going to go to my font, go to font awesome pro, and you'll see that it changes to this little X circle. I'm actually going to switch this to solid. I will add this to both of these. And that is our close icon, which is that optional piece. And then I'm also going to add the icon or text at the beginning. So I'm going to make a frame that's 24 pixels. And then I'm going to call this icon. And then I'm going to make another one. And I'll call this image. I'll grab a picture and throw it in here. And then I'll also grab an icon. I'm just going to type the word image here. We'll have this little placeholder image. And I'm going to set the width of this to 20. And then I will vertically and horizontally align it. And then I'll center that text. And I'm going to take both of these things. And I am going to create a component set. And I'm going to call this leading icon and then I'll set this property to type. So what this does is if I take this and I add it to the beginning of this auto layout piece, if I click on this drop down, I can go between image and icon. So let's keep that in here. We'll also keep this in here. I need to actually remove the fill on that. And then this is too tall now. I'm going to reduce this to four pixels. And then I'm also going to, and this icon have 24 pixels line height so that it's vertically centered. Now that we've got these, let's make the hover state. We'll rename this hover. I'm actually going to change this stroke outline to grade 200. Then I'm going to set the fill of this to grade 100 with a grade zero. This one's a little tricky. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to grade 200 and I am going to unlink this color and I am going to add another color and I'm going to have it be the fill of this and remove Move that back here. I'm gonna take this top color layer and change it to 50% opacity so that we have our hover state here. Also add in a disabled state, all this disabled, flat disabled. Now let's change this to be that 100. And one thing I've noticed with all of these is that there's a little bit too much space on this side. So I'm gonna click on this independent paddings piece and then on this left one, set it to be four pixels. So now I've got default hover disabled. Go ahead and add a little space here and we are going to call this focus, all the rest, we'll call this active and the focus here, make this that gray 200. For pressed, we'll have that same state, but we're gonna add a shadow here. Let's do one pixel offset Y and then two pixel blur. And we'll set this to 10% and then we're gonna add another one. This will be two and four, 8%. And then we will do four, eight, and that will be 6%. And what you can see is I am multiplying all of these values by two and then reducing the other value by 2% each time this last one 1632 and i'm going to call this press data apply that down here as well and i've got the press state for both of these now let's change the fill of both of these to that 100 so it's a little darker and then for this active for both of them what we're going to do is we're going to change this outline to be that primary purple and then for this outlined one we'll use a little bit lighter primary so we'll use this light primary and then for this one we're going to go with the medium primary and then for both of these we'll take 
all of the grays and we'll turn them to that primary color as well. Now that I have all my initial versions for both filled and outline design, I'm going to go ahead and select all of these. I'm going to go to create component set and then I'm gonna call this chip and I'm gonna call this first property state, but I already have a filled and an outline. So I need to create another variant here. And I'm gonna call this outline and I'm gonna set the default value to false. It means it'll be filled by default. Go ahead and create that property. And then I'm gonna select all of these and I'm gonna go from outline false to outline true. And that way, if I take one of these components and then I go toggle outline on, it'll toggle on. This is true of any of these states. But now I need to make the versions that don't have a close icon or don't have this image. Image. So let's take this leading icon piece. We're going to move this up here a bit. We're going to take this whole chip area and expand it a little bit. So let's take all of this and duplicate it. We're going to remove this close icon. All right, so now I have the version with the image, the text string, and the close icon, the one without the close icon. Let's duplicate this again. And then we're going to move this down just so that there's a little bit more separation. Now let's go ahead and select all of these. And then we're going to remove that leading icon. If I tap delete, you notice we don't have enough padding here. So what I need to do is select these and then I'm going to set this to 12 and that way it evens back out. All right, so now I have all of the versions except for the one that doesn't have the close icon. So I'm going to go in here and select all of these. We will delete those. Created all of our components, but we don't have the variants that we need to be able to actually use them. I'm going to select this chip component step. I'm going to add an additional variant and I'm going to call this leading icon and I'm going to set the default value to true. I will select all the instances that don't have a leading icon and I'm going to set this value to false or set there. And now I'm going to add one last variant. I'm going to call this trailing icon. Let's set this default value to false. I'm going to create one more variant called trailing icon. And let's set the default value to true. Create the property. And I'm going to select all the instances that don't have trailing icons. And I'm going to set that value to false. And now I take one of these chips and I can change it to outline. I can remove the leading icon. I can remove the trailing icon. I could remove both. And then I can also change the state. One thing to note when looking at material designs guidance is that there are slightly different states for each of the four different chip types. For sake of simplicity when building out the design system, I decided to just include the states and the outline versus filled type because I thought that would be enough for most use cases. If you needed to, you can go back through the project and add any instances you might need for your work. And that's it. You now have a chip component that you can use for a wide variety of different use cases. You can even go in here, let's take this image, swap it out for an icon. It's an extremely flexible component that you can use for everything from the little widgets that show up when you've entered someone's name in an email or calendar invite, to selecting an item from a list, to choosing a time for a reservation. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you now have a better understanding of chip components, how they work, and more importantly, how to design them when working on your next project. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Soren, and I'll see you in the next video.